The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is still on pause nationwide as federal health officials review six cases of rare blood clots after receiving the vaccine. It is leaving many people to wonder if it is safe to still get the vaccine. In today's To Your Wellbeing, Cone Health Chief Pharmacy Officer Dr. Deanne Brooks is joining us to talk about the pause on the vaccine and then the steps moving forward. All right, so first and foremost, let's kind of just go down the line. Why was the Johnson & Johnson vaccine paused? So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was paused because it was found that in six women developed blood clots that are a very rare type of blood clot. And so it was decided to go ahead and pause the vaccine um, at that time. And part of the pause of that um, to pause the Johnson & Johnson vaccine at that time is also to help educate others about this rare disease so that as this occurs, um, treatment is known how to do that because it's a different type of treatment with this particular type of blood clot um, than someone typically presents with. All right, and so to help us kind of really get our arms around this because people say, well, what's rare to one person is not rare to another. How rare is this reaction? Yeah, so it's, it's really more than one in a million. Uh, people are more likely to get struck by lightning than to get this particular side effect. Um, but it's still, it's a side effect that we need to be aware of so that we know how to treat the patient if we know that they have received a Johnson & Johnson vaccine within the last three weeks. Okay, and you're saying three weeks, because right now we're saying, if you already received the J&J &J vaccine, what should you do? Should you be concerned? Yeah, so again, it's very, very rare. And so what you want to do is if you develop a severe headache, shortness of breath, severe abdominal pain or leg pain, then you would want to seek medical attention immediately. And in the six patients that this occurred, it occurred within the first three weeks of getting the vaccine. And so anytime during that period of time, you would want to let your healthcare provider know that you received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. All right, so we're thinking that it's kept to that three weeks. But of course, if you had any of those kinds of symptoms after three weeks, you should still contact your doctor. Yes, yes, and I and as healthcare professionals as well as we're taking a health history, we'll be asking about that as well. Have you had any vaccines lately? What vaccine did you get? And even if it's beyond three weeks, we'll still be very cautious, of course. All right. So you said um, shortness of breath, severe headache, leg pain. How are these symptoms different than the normal vaccine side effects reactions that people may be dealing with? Yeah, so the typical side effects that we see from the COVID-19 vaccines are feeling of just fatigue, just kind of just feeling blah, don't want to get out of bed. We also are seeing soreness in the arm after the injection. Um, sometimes folks can have a headache and um, those are the typical signs, not so much the signs of having a blood clot. Right, so could this reaction, the same blood clot reaction occur with the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines? Why or why not? We have not seen that happen and they are different vaccines in terms of the technology of how they have been created. So the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine are both messenger RNA vaccines and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is called a viral vector. So it uses a virus called the adenovirus that actually holds that piece of the virus that tells our bodies to make antibodies against COVID-19. All right, so not surprising, when people heard this news, they became a little bit more hesitant, some to get the COVID-19 vaccine. So what would you tell them, those who are, you know, looking at these news reports and saying, maybe I'm considering not getting this at all? Yeah, so what I would say is the system is working. And as people say that they're concerned about the vaccine, um, there's also been some, some uh, I'll say, um, 
uh, concern about should we really have pulled it or should the FDA and CDC have pulled or paused the vaccine with only six people out of 6.8 million. But it also shows that the system is working. Um, there was an effect that was found that was unusual and the right thing to do was to pause it and to study to determine what are the next steps with this vaccine. All right, so after the CDC and FDA investigation, if the results do show that the J&J &J vaccine is safe, should people feel comfortable about getting this as a vaccine option? Yes, I would feel comfortable getting this as a vaccine option, and I would share that with patients, and I would share it with my loved ones as well. As well. Once we get the information back, we but I can't make that determination until we get more information about what we found in terms of the full study of that. And we're thinking that it could be this week that we get that determination. Yes, that's what we're thinking by Friday that we'll learn more about that and then we'll have some more information to share at that time. Okay, all right, so stick around. What we wanna do is we wanna answer your questions next. You can text us your questions to 336-379-5775. Remember, this is text only, so please don't call. We'll see you in just a few minutes.